Okay, it looks like the amount of people joining has slowed down, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, today, your presenters are myself, Hannah Gunderson, and I'm here with Sarah Beth. My teammate, we're both, um, oops, I guys, I forgot to update the slide. It says Director of Professional Services, so I just gave Sarah Beth a promotion. Um, <laughs> we'll have to tell my supervisor about that, but we're both professional services specialists. I'm sorry I have a little error on slide one. Um, but before we get started, I also want to point out that in the questions or on your screen, you should have a questions chat and in there you'll be able to post questions throughout the webinar as they come up. So don't feel like you have to wait till the end where we have the question section. You can be putting those in as they come up and Sarah Beth will be answering those for you um, to make sure it's working. We always have you guys throw something in the chat. I think last webinar I asked what people were most excited about for the Olympics, but I'm going to reuse that because I've been watching it. So you can either tell me what your favorite part has been so far or the event you're most looking forward to. Um, I think personally, I really, gymnastics is such a given. I think everyone likes that one. I was very excited watching the 100 meter, watching Noah Lyles win. I was like screaming at my TV. My boyfriend had no faith and I told him that we'd win and we did. So I was very excited. Um, it looks like some questions are coming through. Everyone's saying definitely women's gymnastics, gymnastics. Katie Ledecky also is really good. She's so insanely good at swimming. Now, let me see a couple more. They're really coming in. Looking forward to the women's soccer final. Oh my gosh, I watched that game, what was it, yesterday? That stressed me out so bad. I'm not like normally a huge soccer fan. I'm like, maybe this is why, because my heart rate was up. Um, other ones we have, diving. Sweden's pole vaulter, bef last comment I'm gonna give on the Olympics before we move to the next slide. So sweet, I don't know if you guys saw the guy from Team USA cheering him on when he got that world record. It was so cute. He was like getting the audience going, like waving his arms, clapping for him. It was so excited. So I thought that was, Really nice sportsmanship. But yeah, y'all keep sending those. Sir Beth is going to be looking at the chat. Again, we're seeing gymnastics and volleyball. So I feel like a lot of us are on the same page. Um, but moving into our webinar now, we have our agenda. So the first thing we're going to go over is just tips for a successful recruitment. Um, I'll give those on the next slide. And then you're going to hear them again at the end because we just really like to drill down on those. Um, the next thing will be logins and account setup. So just what that's going to look like for you guys getting into your account. Um, then this main menu and features, this is where we're going to go through kind of that like mock recruitment. Um, it's nothing you'll need to stress about. It's pretty straightforward. We have it all laid out really easy for you guys to be able to go through everything. So I'll show you that. And then after that, we're going to go over voting and reporting. Um, so we'll see what it looks like to vote as a member. So I'll have a second account that I log into where I can show you what a ballot would look like. And then finally, we have that Q&A section. So again, feel free to throw in the questions as we go throughout the webinar. Sarah Beth will answer them. Um, and then if at the end it's something good for everyone to know, we'll read them out loud. Some of y'all's questions are specific to your national or international organization. So it may not apply to everybody. So sometimes if those come up, Sarah Beth will um, you know, give you an answer just for y'all, but we won't share them just because it's gonna have like that information that's kind of private to your chapters about how you guys vote, like those different categories, values, things like that, how you set up your round. So Sarah Beth will just answer those in the chat or if it's something that may be a little bit longer of an answer, she'll um, let you know that we'll send you like a follow-up email going over going over everything that will give you again like those answers specific to your um your organization i do see a question from lauren she said can we do a refresher on how to upload parties that will be part of this so we'll definitely go over that for you um it'll be in the main menu and features okay so moving over these are our tips so it's just login practice and train so login this is probably the one of the biggest ones that I would say is like simple, but just make sure you do it with your members. Make sure once you add all your voting members as users that they can log into their account at least a week before recruitment starts. You just don't want when everything is starting to ramp up and you have the pressures of recruitment. You don't want it to be the day of, you know, party one, day one is starting in like an hour. And then, you know, Sarah Beth's like, I can't get into my account and you're trying to update her email. Most of the time it is just an email that needs to be updated, but you know, like heaven forbid, it's something that needs our recruitment support team. They can definitely fix that quickly, but when you're in like a time crunch of like 20 minutes, um, it may be a little stressful trying to get that in. So definitely make sure everyone can log in before, so that way when recruitment starts, all you have to do is worry about like actually having your parties and voting on the PMs. Second one is practice. So 
What I'll use in this webinar are the practice files we have available to you guys. So you guys will be able to download those or you can make your own. I'll show you how you could do that. Um, but you definitely want to practice. I know my chapter always did a mock recruitment as part of Polish Week. It was like the last thing we did. People invited their parents, their boyfriends, um, their fiancés if they had one. I feel like most of us had boyfriends, not fiancés, but some people had a fiancé. Um, you know, we just invited different people and did a mock recruitment with them. So you could do that as well just to get used to using the software. Um, and making sure everybody in your chapter is comfortable with how it functions. And the last thing is just training. So doing what you're doing now, going to a webinar, reviewing them, knowing where your resources are. So I'll give contact information at the end. You'll have a recruitment support team, but there's also resources in Omega Recruit that I'll show you. So that way, you know, if something comes up that you're not sure of, again, you don't have to have that initial like panic feeling you'll be like I know exactly where I can go to get the answer I need if I can't find it here I know who to email so that way again just taking as much stress off of recruitment as possible because we know it's just like a very intense time very short window for you guys to get all this stuff done so looking at this page now this is an activation email so if this is your first year using a make recruit um, we're very happy to have you and you should have gotten one of these so once you um, paid for Mega Recruit and signed up. Our implementation team will have sent you this. Um, just one of you from your chapter has to do this. This is different than like adding individual voting users. This is just setting up your chapter's account. Um, you'll just follow the instructions on here, go to that link, and then be able to set up your account. Once that's done, then you'll be able to add your users. And then going over to the next slide, this is what all of your users are going to get. So um, if you're a new chapter adding users or if you're a returning chapter, whenever you go add all those voting members, um, so you'll have to re-add everybody since we reset the accounts, they're going to get this email. If you've never used Omega Recruit, you'll create your account. Or if you have used it previous years, you can click this button and then just log in using the same information you used last year. I know some of you guys also use Omega One or Vault or other products. Um, so if you sign up using the same email, they should all be linked. So when you go through here, you'll log in and then you'll be able to switch or select which, um, which, what is the word, like app, I guess you'd want to use. So if you're going to go to, you know, your My Omega Phi account or if you're going to Omega Recruit, Omega One, they'll be able to select Omega Recruit from that. Um, I will show you how to add users, but I'm going to wait till I switch to Mega Recruit. So I'm going to go over one more slide just to give you guys a quick overview going into this webinar. Just remember, recruitment in a Mega Recruit is literally as easy as one, two, three. So you're just going to add rounds, upload your PMs, and upload your parties. And once you do that, you'll be able to cycle through, and it's really going to be a breeze. The software does a lot of the work for you. It's going to add up a lot of those scores for you, so you don't have to worry about, you know, adding PNM scores or trying to keep track of things like that. The software is going to record all of that information for you, and I can start showing you that now. So let me switch over to Mega Recruit. We'll show you how things will upload, and you can start working through that. Okay, so when you first get into Mega Recruit, this is the first thing that's going to pop up. So if you're going in to add users or anything else, it's going to say update your recruitment dates. When we click confirm, it's going to take us to the page that it's on. Now, it may be a little confusing at first because you're looking at this and you're saying, edit rounds. Like, where am I setting up the recruitment dates? All you have to do is click this edit chapter button and your recruitment dates will be here. So for the sake of this webinar, I'm going to say the first day of recruitment's today and it's going to go through... Um, I'll put it through Saturday. It's kind of a long recruitment, but it really doesn't matter. Um, and we'll click save. Once that's done, you guys should be good to go to start with all those steps of adding your users, everything else. So when we go to the PNM list, this is definitely like your home page. If you're ever lost in the process, what step you should be on, always go back to this PNM list. Um, once you upload PNMs, they'll all be listed here. So sometimes when you go to PNM, PMs list, you're like, I'm looking at PMs, where's my checklist? You just click this little setup button and it's going to always bring you back here. Um, here you can see is where those sample files are that we're going to be using. So I'm going to just download these really quick by clicking them. Um, if you use these, you'll notice it tells you how many parties are in each of these sample party files. So you'll want to keep that in mind when I show you how to set up um, recruitment date or excuse me, recruitment rounds in just a second. I'm um, going down here. You'll also see we have all the steps listed. So step one, we have round. Step two, PMs. Step three, upload users. I'm actually going to start with step three, um, just to show you what that looks like. So if we wanted to 
add an individual user, like maybe you've already done a big upload and you just have to add one person, this is gonna be the easiest way to do it. So just put on their first name, last name, email. With the email, you're gonna wanna make sure it's the correct one. So sometimes you'll have members saying they can't get into their account. It's because maybe you added them with their school email because that's what they use with the Mega One or with Vault and they're like using their personal email. So you'll just wanna make sure you put in the right email so when they try to log in, it actually works. And then you would click the add users button. If you wanna see a list of all your users, it's just under this user tab. Um, and then we can look at our user list. So here are the ones that we have in our test account. These are just some of my teammates. Um, Jacob, maybe some of y'all met with him before. He's one of our guys who works in sales. Um, but we have everybody listed here. Um, so when you're going through this, if you see someone's missing, like just one person, again, users, you can do add users and upload them here individually. Or if you have like your entire chapter, so when you first go in, you're definitely not gonna wanna have to do, if you have like a larger chapter, you're like, I'm not gonna add 250 names individually. You can have a um, a file and then upload it as an Excel spreadsheet and it'll upload them all at once. So here's your little email list. And then you would click upload and it's gonna import all of those users. users. So that'll save you a lot of time. Again, if you're using some of our other software, you can probably just download your users from Vault or Omega One and then just upload them here. Just wanna make sure that you format it with their first name, last name, email, nothing extra. Um, going back to the user list, another couple of things I wanna point out to you. Um, just troubleshooting things. Again, if you have members who are like, I can't log in, you realize it's their email. Instead of editing the email, what you do is you would just delete them as a user and then you'll re-add them. So um, like, let's say for example, Amanda, this is her work email, but she was like, I wanted to do it with my personal one. We would just delete it, re-add Amanda with her personal one, and then she'll be able to log in. You can also assign groups. So if they're like maybe in bump group one, bump group two, whatever it is, you can add those there. Um, and then the other fields you'll see are these admin fields. So uh, if they're gonna be like an administrator on the account, we're all administrators here because we work at Omegafy and we do these webinars for you, but all of your members will not be admin, I'm assuming. I think that would be a little bit risky. Um, so you'll make sure those are only checked for maybe your VP of recruitment or the equivalent, uh, maybe your treasurer, you have a membership team, whoever is gonna need access to all of these reports to be able to see like how members are voting, they'll be listed as an admin and they'll be able to add users. Um, the restrict button, you can use this different ways. I think the way most people would do it is, let's say um, Sarah Beth has like an excused absence for round three of recruitment. She like has, maybe it's finals. She was doing summer school and her finals are overlapping with recruitment. And you're like, that's obviously a reason to miss recruitment. We want everybody to do well in their finals. If she's not gonna be there round three, you could go in here when round three starts and restrict her. Well, that's Amanda, but um, if we went down to Sarah Beth, we could restrict her. And that way she's not able to vote like during that round because she's not supposed to be there. So that way you can kind of prevent people from voting when they shouldn't be instead of having to delete their account. And then the last thing is the starred feature. This will work with the matching tool over here that I'm gonna show you at the end. Um, again, you can choose how you use this, but I think what a lot of people use it for is um, you can kind of star maybe your best recruiters. So if we're looking at this and we're like, we know no matter who they're talking to, like Amanda can recruit, like she's just got that natural ability. It's kind of ironic that our guy on our sales team isn't maybe one of our best recruiters, so I'll promote him. And then um, I have myself and Heather, I'm sorry, Sarah Beth, I have one listed not as a star recruiter, but we star them. And then when we upload our PMs, we'll have the opportunity to star them as well, if that's what you're interested in. Maybe those are PMs that when you're going through, just looking at their, um, you know, those PM sheets say like upload when you sign up for recruitment and you're like, you know what? It looks like this PM really looks like she potentially could be a good fit. Like we're really interested in her. Her GPA matches like our academic values and her community service is what our philanthropy is. And she just seems like she'd be a really great fit. You'd be able to star her. And then that way, when we use the matching feature, you could set it to be like, we only want our best recruiters to be matching with maybe our PMs we're most interested in. And you can adjust these throughout recruitment. So if after going through it, I'm like, my voice is shot, like y'all do not keep matching me. Like I'm gonna have to be a floater or something like that. You can unstar people and same with your PMs, you can adjust those as you go through recruitment. All right, now going back to our PM list, um, 
you can see it was just reloading there. We're just going to start going in order because, again, so we have it set up. It's the easiest way to do it. So we'll click step one, and here we're going to see our rounds. So um, really important to note about rounds is you only need one round per this is going to sound obvious, one round per round. The reason I say that is because some of you guys at bigger schools will maybe have round one over two different days. Don't think you have to add two round ones for each day. You can have it all set here because you'll be able to open and close these. So you can have round one open for day one, close it at the end of day one, and then round one, day two, you can reopen this. You don't have to add you know, like if recruitment six days, you don't need to add six rounds. If you only have a four round recruitment, only add four rounds. Um, you'll be able to use this pencil icon to edit the name. So maybe round one, you guys call open house. I know it's different at each university, but maybe it's open house. Um, round two maybe is sisterhood. Round three, we may have philanthropy. I'm just doing them the way they did them at my school. I know everybody's different. And then round four, you'll see, is always flagged as preference. But we can also use this pencil icon, and we can put in pref. So that way we know what those rounds are. Um, and then we can also add the parties. Now, for the sake of this webinar and the practice files, we know how many parties are for each round. But this is going to be something that you're probably going to have to go back and edit as you get your party list back. It's kind of difficult to know exactly. Um, I truthfully don't know how those algorithms work. I don't know that any of us fully know. We kind of get it. But depending on how you guys vote and the PNMs vote and all of that, you know, you get your list back and your parties. So um, once you get those, you'll be able to go in here and fill them in. I believe we had 12 parties for round one in the practice files and nine for round two. And if I'm wrong, I will come back and show you how to edit it. But I'm pretty sure that's right. So we'll go in. We have this all filled in and we can click save. And then when we go to edit rounds, you can see our rounds listed here. Once they're saved, we can't edit the names of them. So if you set it up and then it was, um, you forgot to put the names, they're just going to get kind of locked in like this. But you will see that we can always edit these parties, which is a step that's in that checklist on that PNM list page. So once you get those party lists in, or if your chapter uses ICS as, you know, those import, you can go in and adjust this as needed. All right, now going back to our PNM list. Again, we're going to this little home base so we don't get off track. You can see step one disappeared because we um, added those rounds. And just double checking here, I was right. So it was 12 rounds and nine. That was good. So now we're going to go to step two and we're going to upload PNMs. If your school is an ICS school, um, your PNMs will import from there if you link ICS with the mega recruit. If your school school uses like campus director or something different, then um, you'll have to upload your, your PNMs. Here we have a very important little pop-up that we've created, which is how you need to format these files for your PNMs. Um, if you do not format using these instructions, it may not import correctly, and then you really could have a mess on your hands. So if you have it imported all wrong, editing, if you're a school that has like 2,000 PNMs, that could really uh, cost you some time. So definitely make sure you're going through and reading this. Um, you can see up here all of the steps. It'll have an example of what the spreadsheet should look like. And then the most important part are these column headers. So make sure when you make this Excel spreadsheet, you can see like this one has high school, class size, class rank, whatever these categories are that you want to import, make sure you're using in like these bold sections, these exact column uh, names because for example if you put first names like names with an s it's not going to read it correctly and import it right it's only going to know how to do it if it says first name so um probably easiest would just be like copy and paste that's what i do because i'm scared of messing things up um to get that done but you can also just double check it make sure it looks good before importing if you're going through this and you're like none of these column headers match what i'm trying to import just use the custom one, custom two, custom three, you have all the way up to six. It will import it as a custom column. And once it's imported, you'll then be able to edit the name of that column, the header, once it's in a mega recruit. But when you're importing it, you want to make sure that this is listed as custom one, custom two, whatever it is, if it's not on this list. That way it all imports correctly. Down here, we have information on how to save it. So it's going to be the Excel 97-2003 workbook the XLS file. Um, you can see it listed right there too. So that's how you'll want to save it. And then once it's saved, you'll be good to upload the file. So we do have this there for you. 
um, just to be able to reference. Let me get back to PN upload. I'm going to choose my file. Download. Sorry, you guys are seeing all of the junk I have in here. If this pop up box is even showing, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, but I picked my upload for PNMs. We're going to click upload PNMs. And what's cool about this practice file is it does give us a warning. So if something didn't import correctly, it'll tell you. Um, you can see here, warning, it was saying missing unrequired column, which isn't a big deal because it's unrequired, but it gives you information on all that. So you'll be able to go through and double check if anything didn't import correctly, it'll give you a little notice down here. But you can see it successfully imported 99 PNMs, which is exactly what's on our practice file. So now we can go back to PNM, PNM list. Here is where um, we have our steps, but we also can click close and you'll see all of the names listed here. So you can see we use little bear pictures because we think it's cute for all of our women. Um, and then you have all of the columns imported here. So right now I can't scroll, but if I wanted to add more columns with information that we imported, you can always click this little hamburger icon and then it'll let you select the columns and you'll be able to choose um, whatever different areas you want. So you'll be able to customize this, whatever makes the most sense for your chapter. And then you'll see it'll start importing like hometown. You can also drag and drop these, oh geez, drag and drop them. So if I wanted those for whatever reason after sisterhood round, I'd probably keep my rounds together. But if you wanted to, you could drag it over there and it would be um, moved for you. So you'll be able to customize the order of these however you guys want. So that'll be really helpful. Again, every chapter works a little differently. So whatever is going to make things run smoothly, smoothest, I think that's a word. Y'all, my brain is like fried right now. I feel like whatever's gonna make everything run the most smooth, smoothest. Um, I don't know why that word sounds weird. You'll be able to order that and have it all set up to go however you guys want it. So going back to the setup list, we can now go to our steps and see where we're at. We already added users. This is a test account, so we only have the five listed, but for your chapter, um, if you didn't do this first, you could go add all of the women in your chapter that'll be voting or um, this will just sit there and then you guys can skip over it. You can always add users throughout recruitment. So maybe like halfway through recruitment, you have a, maybe your seniors come and then you could add them as members. Then there's not like a limit of when you can add the users. You can do it during recruitment um, or before. So now the next thing we're going to do is go down to advanced round, advanced round and party. Um, normally for round one. So if we're here, you can see we have it for 12 rounds. Um, if you don't have any parties for round one, then you could just go straight to advanced round and party. But if we do want to use rounds like we have in this practice file, um, we should be able to go down here. I don't know why these aren't clickable. Uh, maybe I just need to upload the PNM parties. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm being a little dumb right now. Step five, like I said, my brain is just tired today. Um, we can go to the upload PNM parties list. So again, we have these detailed instructions. These ones, y'all, so much easier. So this is just their little PNM ID number, their member ID. I think that's a membership ID number, whatever that stands for, the PNM number, and then the party that they're going to be in. And then it tells you how you can, again, save this. It's that 97 2003 workbook. Um, the practice files are already formatted for you, so you can just do choose file. Um, parties one is for round one, and this is for open house. That was our first round, if you guys remember. So we'll click submit parties, and you can see it successfully assigned all those PNMs a party. So if we go back here, PNM list, we want to advance the round and party. Right now it's before recruitment, we haven't started, but let's say round one is today. Um, we're going to go to open house, and we're going to start with party one, click change status, voting's now open, and recruitment starting. So um, we'll pretend our we're in our party right now. We're talking to the PNMs. Hopefully everything's going well. And then once the party ends, all the PNMs leave, your members will be able to log in or they should already have their, lo their login done on their phone. But if not, they'll be able to log in to make recruit and vote on the PNMs that they um, spoke to. So that is the basics for running through recruitment. Do you all have any questions on that before I switch and show you what the voting's going to look like? And once we get some votes in, then we'll be able to show you what that looks like in a mega recruit to review. Um, I don't think I see any that are like specific to those steps. Okay. Hey, cool. Oh, yes. Actually, can you go over to um, the edit rounds? And we did have one question mm -hmm. kind of specific about um, deleting a specific round after you save them. And so I know 
like you can see the red X at the preference, but not mm -hmm. over the others. So um, essentially, once you've saved your rounds after setup, you would have to delete that last round and then the next round mm -hmm. and the next round to get to like sisterhood. Mm -hmm. um, we always say to set all your rounds up as you need at the beginning, how they need to be set up and everything. Um, you can always update the parties accordingly, but it gets really tricky and can complicate scoring mm -hmm. um, if you try and delete rounds after voting has already started. Yes. Thank you. Do we have any other questions there, Beth, before I switch to this ballot? Um, that was only one really related to, to that. Okay. Oh, geez. Y'all, I just logged in with the wrong email. Give me one second. Okay. Let me go back to Mega Recruit. I'm having to pull it up. So what I'll show you here for you guys as admin, oh, let me unpause my screen. Um, you'll have this vote button and this is where your ballot's gonna live. So for you guys, it'll automatically pop up, but because I'm like a staff member at OmegaFi, um, it says like a developer of an organization, I can't cast a vote. So what I'm doing is opening up a second window and normally, I would have this pulled up. Um, so I'm just pulling it up. I have a test account that I'll be able to vote on to show you guys. So let's go to Omega Recruit. And what happened is I logged in on this test account using my normal work email. So it was giving me the same notice. Okay. Just give me one second. Hannah, while you're um, getting that mm -hmm. pulled up, I figured I'd just mention, because I did have a question about login. Um, if you're mm -hmm. not seeing your Omega One or um, your Omega Recruit, when you log in, mm -hmm. like if you use another one of our products, um, Omega One or Vault um, or My Omega Five, that means your admin mm -hmm. probably hasn't added you. So you need to have them do that, that or you've been added under a different account. So you guys as admins, one way to make sure you're not entering somebody with a different email than they've already had set up, if mm -hmm. you use any of your um, our other services, you could always export the list of emails that are used for that um, through mm -hmm. uh, Ball or Omega One to make sure that the users have all the same login emails. But just figured I'd mention that while you were getting that pulled up. Yep, perfect. Thank you. And I do have the ballot pulled up, so thank you all for your patience. So you can see here it has at the top of our ballot, and again, this was just under this vote section. Um, you can see we're on open house party one, so everybody's ballot in your chapter should say the same thing. And what's cool about this is if you remember our practice file had 99 PNMs, you can see we do not have 99 PNMs to pick from here. It's only going to show us the woman um, who were in round one party one. So it kind of limits that list. It saves us, honestly, a lot of time from having to scroll. So let's say I spoke to Ashley. Um, I can see her information here. I also can click this little light bulb icon and it's gonna give us more information about her. So let's say, um, I'm sure this happened with me when I went through recruitment. I am like one of a million Hannahs, I feel like. So a lot of times it's easy to remember the first name, but maybe in party one, round one, like when we're looking at this, there was a bunch of Hannahs listed and it's like, shoot, I cannot remember what her last name was. We could select her name, click this light bulb, and then there's this extra information here so it can kind of jog your memory. So if I'm like, I know I spoke to Hannah, I can't remember, I know she's from Columbus, Georgia, and then on here the high school said Columbus High School. I'm like, okay, I'm pretty sure it was that one. Also, my picture should be here. Um, so that would also probably make it a little bit easier. They're like, yep, that's the girl I spoke to. Um, so you'll have that extra information. Whenever you're ready to submit the vote, um, your totals may look different here. You may have a couple rows, like a couple categories to vote in. Everybody, I shouldn't say everybody, but like based on your national or international organization, some of you guys may have different values here, but it still like works the same. So whatever your scale is, for the sake of this one, we're gonna say one is low, five is the best. Um, we'll give them a five. I really love talking to Ashley. I could say maybe she loves, I'm gonna say loves the Packers because I'm a Packers fan and from Green Bay, um, loves the Packers. And that could be maybe useful information to match her up with somebody later. Again, this category may not be on your ballot or it may be on there and it could be used for different things. So maybe your chapter only puts like interest you found out. Maybe it's just saying like, I really love 
speaking to her. Maybe it's concerns. Like however your chapter does this, they should, well, you guys probably know that as admin, you'll just communicate that with your members so that way they can use these fields how they're supposed to. I'm gonna say she loves the Packers, we're using it for interest. And the recommended member match, I'm gonna give it to maybe Jacob because maybe Jacob is also a huge Packers fan. So I think it'd be good for them to chat. I can click submit and then my vote went in. Now, I think a lot of you probably talked to multiple women round one, you have like bump groups. So maybe after talking to Ashley, you can see she's no longer on the list because I already voted. But maybe after talking to her, I went and I spoke with Daniela and she was really nice. I don't love her as much as Ashley, but I still think she'd be a great fit for Omega Phi's chapter. So I'm giving her a three. Um, maybe I don't have a comment, but again, I could recommend a member match. Maybe she likes to read, so I'll give her a uh, match or two Amanda because I know Amanda likes to write books. So we'll click submit and you'll just go through and vote on all the members that you spoke to. And then let me go back over here. Oh, Sarah Beth, was there a question? Oh, I thought I heard her talking. Oh, okay. sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Okay, so then we'll go back. Once this is done, I'm gonna show you guys what it's gonna look like on Omega Recruit side. So let's say party one is done for open house. What we're gonna do is close this, change status. No one else is able to submit a vote on their ballot for any of the women in round one party one, unless they go to use an admin. And maybe it was like, oh my gosh, wait, I forgot to submit a, bo a vote on one of the women I spoke to. They can go to you and you guys will be able to manually add a vote to that PNM, but your members are not going to be able to do it. Here we go. We're back. Okay, so we're back on our PNM list and you can see that there's now votes in for some of these members that I voted on. So Ashley was one that I gave a five. If I click into her name, I can see the details so you can see who voted on her. So Hannah Gunderson voted on her, gave her a five. If maybe I did that by accident and then I'm not an admin on the account, or even if you are an admin, maybe you only want edits to be done by a different admin than you just um, to make like for transparency's sake. I could be like, you know what, I voted on Ashley, I meant to give her a four, accidentally submitted five, can you edit it? You guys will be able to go in there, click edit, and we could change her vote to a four, It'll save it, and then I'll show you where you can see an audit log of all of that, but you will be able to edit them, and you can also go through it based on the round. So as we go through more and more recruitment, we can look at her votes by each round, under comments, we can see all the comments listed for open house. So I said she loves the Packers, super useful information. Um, maybe I think one time in my chapter, you could use the comment section kind of loosely, but I spoke to a girl and she wouldn't talk to me. I don't know why, if she was nervous or what, but I added a comment and I was like, try to talk to her about X, Y, and Z. Like I could not get her to respond other than her name, maybe put a note in like that. So you can have all of that information. Um, in the moment, you you know obviously think like, I'll remember this PM, but once you talk to, you know, tens of hundreds of girls during the day, they eventually can kind of start blurring together. So all of these comments could be useful again, depending how your chapter uses that. And you will be able to filter by the round. Also, if you need to delete this, so maybe I voted on Ashley, but this wasn't actually who I spoke to. I could go to my admin and say, hey, I accidentally voted on Ashley Baines, but I spoke to Ashley Barnes, actually. Can you delete my comment, my vote? We could click this delete button under comments and under vote, and that way it's taken off this PNM since she wasn't the one you guys spoke to. Um, other things under the PNM, as you can see, their status and parties, so we can see that she's active. We're only in round one, so she's still an active PNM, but as you start getting those lists back for round two, round three, um, maybe she no longer um, is active, so you could say she was released or maybe she didn't show up to the party. She's a show you have all of these um, different categories here that you can do. And then under PNM details, we just have some information about her. That's the stuff that imported when we uploaded her in the PNM list. And then recruitment stats. This is gonna be a really boring page right now because I am the only one who voted on her. But as more PNMs, or excuse me, more of your members talk to them, this is gonna fill in more and more. So you're gonna get more data on her. Going back to the PNM list again, just some other things I can show you is um, is looking at this again. If we wanted to get more information on these women, we can go to the select columns. We can change the different um, information we're looking at. I personally, again, it's different, but like once recruitment gets started, sometimes all of this extra info can be a little bit distracting and maybe I really only want to see like what party she's in, her name, picture, and then the rounds. So that way we can see her votes. But if you want more information, you can add those in. If you want to search through your PNM list, you have these filters here. Um, so that way you can 
see we have examples up here if you want to look by only your active PMs or maybe only the freshmen you can search it like that um, you can also sort it using these things so if you want it descending like class order descending you could do that if you want it round one ascending you can put those in um, one more thing I want to show you under this PM page that I didn't go over before it's not essential for recruitment but just kind of a cool little extra on this page just to show you guys is this slideshow um, this slideshow you can skip through it and it's going to show you all of your all of your PNMs their pictures and their information so sometimes this is nice to go through before recruitment just to like familiarize yourself with some of the PNMs coming in the house again like there's sometimes so many women a lot of them having similar names so it's kind of good to like get used to their faces and their names so that way when they start coming in the house you can be like oh wait I think that might be Sarah Beth or oh I think that's you know Ashley she's a junior if I remember right or she's from Houston like my friend's also from Houston so you can kind of get to know them or welcome them as they walk in so they feel really comfortable um, if you guys have a house or a hall or wherever you're doing recruitment you know maybe it just makes them feel a little more at ease if people are like recognizing them or um, just stopping by and talking about things that they're comfortable with. And again, you just use the arrows on your keyboard and it's just going to take you through this. Whenever you're done, click escape. I know the first time I did that, I didn't read the instructions and I didn't know how to get out of there. And I was like, how do I go back? But you just click the escape key and it'll bring you back. All right. And so now what I'm going to go show you, actually, we're already here. We're going to click the setup. Um, if round one is done, party one we can go again to advance round and party so let's say we went through open house party one party two as each round went on we made it all the way to party 12 it's open we had our last party we finished talking we can close it once it's closed no one can submit votes so this is really good for the end of the day of recruitment or maybe we were on only party six if it was like two days for round one um, again we'll have this closed so that when we come back tomorrow to finish up round one we can open it starting with party seven so you'll want to make sure you always go back and do this that way no one's submitting votes when parties aren't happening when they shouldn't be submitting votes um, once open house is done you can switch the rounds up here so we can go to sisterhood um, starting with party one status is open we'll change status and now we're in round two party one getting on with the sisterhood maybe the sisterhood video you're showing them whatever that round entails for you and then again, the voting ballots are going to upload for all of your voting members and yourself. So you'll see whatever PMs are in that round in that party, and you just cycle through it. So it's pretty simple. Um, any questions on that part of it before I show you? Again, there's a couple more extras that I can show you guys that aren't essential to make a mega recruit work, but I think it's kind of cool. So I definitely like going over it. I don't think I see any questions on just like the bare bones of a mega recruit getting through it. I did um, have one that came through that was pretty good mm -hmm. that I think a lot of people or we don't normally talk about in the presentation, mm -hmm. but a lot of people run into. If you want to go add a vote for somebody who didn't vote when the round was open, how would mm -hmm. you do that? Okay. So, Beth, you may have to remind me because I'm a little rusty on that. I believe you can go to the PNM's page, correct? You can, but um, for that round, you would have to reopen that round. So if you're oh. on round three of voting, but somebody forgot to vote on round two for a certain PNM, which typically you're not going to go back. You probably already made your list or whatever, mm -hmm. but um, maybe party, they forgot to vote in party one. You would have to go to your That's editor's phones and set it back to party one yes. if you're already in party 10 and then go add mm -hmm. that vote. So you can either have them add it um, or you can add it, but either way you have to update what uh, round and party you're in to change those votes. Okay, thank you, Sarah Beth. Yeah, I honestly hadn't done that in a minute, but that's a good question because I know that probably does come up. Um, and it kind of brought back a memory. I remember one time during recruitment, we got to the end of the day and they were like, uh, Sarah Beth Russell doesn't have any votes on her. <laughs> like, did someone speak to her? And they had to go back and add um, a vote for her. She did show up and maybe they just forgot to submit it or maybe they didn't hit submit and it didn't go through. So good question. Um, now going just to show you again some of those extras. I think I showed you pretty much everything that's extra under this PNM list. Um, something I will say that's good to know is this refresh button. So sometimes what happens is if a lot of people are voting and 
you go to look at it and you don't see the information that you think was submitted most of the time what will fix it is just clicking this refresh button and it's going to give you the most updated overall score score for each round when you click in their names it'll give you all of those votes so um, number one troubleshooting tip with that before panicking or having to reach out definitely reach out if you have to but a lot of times just clicking this refresh button will solve a lot of your problems um, also under this PNM list I'm just going to show you um, I showed you how to add all those PNMs in mass but let's say um, I don't know if maybe there's like a special circumstance where somebody wasn't on the PNM list from your school, you have to manually add them. You can add PNMs one by one on this page under PNMs, add PNM, and it'll let you just put one in. So maybe something happened and the university reaches out to you like the like Panhellenic is like, hey, can everybody please add this woman to your list? You could go ahead and do that there. Um, other things are just these reports down here. So comments. This will give you a comments report. So right now we only have one comment from me on Ashley, but as recruitment gets going, I'm sure you're gonna have lots of comments down here. You can use the search bar right here to type in a PNM's name if you wanna see that, or you can download it and you can see here, um, it's gonna download all the comments to the spreadsheet and I'll have the name listed. So you guys can have all that information saved. Um, you can also delete comments here, just like you did on the members page. So if maybe I voted on Ashley and gave a comment and then I realized it was the wrong Ashley, you could go here, delete that comment and that way it's taken off since it wasn't actually on this woman. Um, other things down here is these reports I'll show you. Um, so these are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll just kind of click through them really quick. So here's your PNM list. If you only want to see active PNMs, you check the boxes. If you want the comments included, it is exactly what it says it is. So you can just check those boxes, download it to Excel. Same with the statuses. So if you want to see the status for the PNMs, you can see the active ones or the non-active PNMs. Download it. Votes. This will give you a couple ways you can format it. So um, one, again, you can filter if you only want to see your active PNMs. Or if you want to see everybody, you can see the values and then you can sort it. So if you sort votes by user, it will give you a list of all of your voting members. So it would say like Hannah Gunderson and then it's going to show all of the votes I submitted under it. And then I'll say Sarah Beth and show all of the votes that she gave. If we want to do it by PNM, we would do it this way. And then it would say Ashley Baines, all of the votes she had on her. And then it would say the next PNM's list or the next PNM's name and then show all of your members who voted. So it's just however you like that information, PDF or Excel. And the comments works um, the same the same way. So again, if you wanna see your members to see, maybe the report is like you really want people to use comments, um, you could do it this way and be like, okay, Hannah, you've only submitted one comment. Can you give us a little more feedback? It's like really helpful to our membership team. You could do it that way. Or maybe you're looking at it, you're like, Sarah Beth has put in so many comments. She's doing a great job. And you're like, you know what? Shout out, Sarah Beth. Thank you for adding all these great comments. It's really like helping out our team. You could do it that way. Also do it by PNM. So maybe some PNMs don't have any comments and you could look at it that way and say, all right, can you guys give us a little more information on Ashley? We only have one comment. So however you want to download those, you can do it that way slideshow this is going to look really similar to that one i showed you that's like in browser but this one's going to download to powerpoint again filter it however you like here voter distribution um there's not i would show you one but i'm the only one who voted so there's not a lot to look at here but it'll show you like the number of like fives number of fours number of threes all of those different voter distributions for like how many people have used each value and then this vote audit report is one I do want to show you. So I'm going to download this to a PDF really quick. This is really good for any changes made to vote. So if you guys remember earlier in the webinar, I gave Ashley a five and then I edited it to a four. Um, this will have been recorded here. So it will have, this has like, you can see all the different webinars we've been doing here. So it kind of goes back, but I'm trying to find the one from today. Um, Okay, so here we have like the PNM name. We have Ashley. We can see it was round one. When was the vote changed? The date, the time, and then what the vote was changed. All of that is here. So you could see some of these old ones up here. We have the old vote value is a five. We change it to a three. All of this is going to record. So if you feel like something looks wrong, or maybe you like spoke to PNM and you're like, she was nice, but like she just didn't seem super interested. And then all of a sudden she's like, like the top of your PM list and you're like that's a little interesting and you're like how did her votes get so high I don't remember doing that you could see if they were changed 
I don't think y'all will have anybody doing shady or interesting things like that, but it's nice for like a worst case scenario to have this to look back on. Also for things that are legitimately done, this is just nice to have this audit report so you can download it. Um, if you did it to Excel, maybe you want to add a note so you could go to each of those changes and then add a little reason why it was changed. So maybe it was something legitimate, like I said, you could add a note that says like, we changed Ashley's score from a five to a four because Hannah Gunderson spoke to her, said she accidentally submitted it wrong, whatever it is. And then you have that all documented. So if there's ever question on it, you can go back and know exactly why things were changed from their original values. So that is something that's very useful for you guys, that vote audit report. And then the only other thing I'll show down here, not everybody uses these, but if you want to do recommendations, there's like a form up here, you can export it. We don't focus too much on it just because that is so specific to every chapter that um, if that's something you use, your chapter probably knows, knows how they use those recommendation forms. Um, under users, the reports I'll show you, the little extras, again, is just going to bring you to this page, it has a little button to Excel and you can see all the information you're gonna get. So you're gonna get name, email, phone number, hometown, interest and access level. So if you wanna save that, that's a good thing to use. Um, pretty straightforward. Maybe it's just for record keeping. Maybe it's because when these accounts eventually get reset, it's gonna wipe all of your users and you wanna add all of them back. I don't think most people do that because you have people who graduate, but maybe you wanna download it and just have that um, saved for you, you can do that. And then under here, the hub, we have a bunch of different ways to look at data. Again, not super interesting for what I did today because I'm the only one voting, but this could be really insightful once you have all of your members voting on a bunch of different PNMs. Um, you can see there's, just for some examples, you have PNM statuses first round, or maybe we scroll down here. Um, you can see like what the high school GPAs are looking like. So maybe your chapter's like, we only want people with 4.0s or higher. And then you're looking at this and you're like, or higher than a 4.0. I don't think anyone does that, but maybe you only want people higher than a 4.0. You could look at this and be like, you know what? That's probably not realistic considering our PMs mostly have between 3.8s and 4.0s, which is a great GPA. Um, but maybe you want to look at it that way. You can also always flip these over and get like actual breakdowns of the number of people you have at each GPA. Same with any of these other reports. So um, as we're scrolling through them, you can look at them. Let me flip this back over. You can go through here. And again, these are gonna fill in a lot more interesting once you have everybody in your chapter voting. Um, for the matching tab, I'm gonna actually take us back to the PM list because I wanna show you that star feature. You can see here, it's one of, oh, I highlighted the whole thing. You can see the starred PMs right here is one of the fields we can use. So if we go to our PM list and let's say we went through, um, I may have to add my star column back. Let's see. Okay, if we want starred, done. Okay, now we have it. So maybe we went through and we identified that like Ashley really aligns again with a lot of our values. We're really interested in her as like a PNM. Um, we can go through. I'm just gonna star some people from round one. Um, and we'll do this one. So we identified those PNMs as ones we're really interested in and you guys want to use this matching feature. You don't have to do it, but it is kind of a cool feature that we have. We can check that we want to use this starred members PNMs and we make it required. It's super important. We want our best recruiters talking to our best PNMs. Um, you can set this little field right here and you can choose the number, max number of matches per member for PNM. So we don't want the PNMs or the members to match with more than two people. We choose the round. So we're gonna say open house, all parties generate matches. Usually what will happen is um, when we click generate matches, it will like load them and they'll be on this page. I'm gonna show you this really quick. I know this is a little bit before when I usually do it in the webinar. If you wanna see an example of that, the webinars we did all summer, you can see them here under videos and webinars, all these Omega Recruit Summer ones. When you go in here, you can click into them and see the YouTube. If you wanna see what that matching feature looks like, it'll be a better example than what I just did here. It'll be towards the end. So if you just fast forward down there, You'll be able to see it and I'll check on this to make sure that this feature is working because I'm not sure I really if I had to guess it's because I'm in this test account as a developer and not on like a real a mega recruit account like y'all's are it like looks like yours but it's a little bit different um, but normally you can go here you can set those fields so if you want the recommendations if you remember when we voted on the ballot you can recommend members to talk or PNMs to talk to your members, you could use that field, say it's required if you wanted, but you'll be able to fill all of these in and it'll, 
all of this in and it'll match your members with your PNM. So it'll help you kind of, if you line up at the start of parties, I know my chapter did that, you would like pick up a PNM at the door. It'll kind of help you match it up. So that way when you get the list of PNMs, maybe Ashley's first and we know Sarah Beth's match to talk with Ashley, we'll put Sarah Beth at the front of the line to pick up Ashley at the door so that way they can talk for some recruitment. So this is a cool feature, not required for Mega Recruit to work for you guys, but it is something that's there for you guys. And again, I'll double check on that. If you want to see it, definitely go look at one of our webinars from earlier this year and you'll be able to see it. Um, this vote section, again, this is where your ballot's going to be. Can't see it because I'm in developer mode, but that was the one I showed you on the other account that I have. Um, chapter, this is all of that information. So we kind of went through all of this, but something I do want to point out is um, one, edit custom columns. So if you remember I said before, if there wasn't a column header, that match what you wanted, you import them as custom one, two, three. You can fill those in here. Um, ICS, if your school is an ICS school, you can see this link. You're going to choose a mega recruit as your third party provider. It's going to link your universities like PNM registration and the PNM voting and where you guys submit your votes um, or like your list as a chapter. It'll link that for you so that way the two talk together. If your school doesn't use ICS, you can ignore this page. Something I will recommend is if you're using those practice files, um, I would unlink your account from ICS just for the sake of practice since they may have some like real PNM data and stuff in there. And then once you're done practicing, you can relink ICS and Omega Recruit so those talk together. Um, and the last thing on this page is Master Reset. You will need to know about this if you're doing practice. So once you get through practicing, um, you're going to want to click this master reset button. It'll show you that it's going to remove all the PNMs, all the votes and comments. And the system is set back to before recruitment. Once real recruitment starts, like pretend this page doesn't exist. If you guys master reset your account, once votes have been submitted, we really may not be able to get this data back for you. So if you're like round three of recruitment, you voted on like thousands of PNMs at this point, and then you click master reset, we may not be able to get that data back. And you're going to, Honestly, I, I don't know how you would even do that. That really stresses me out. If there was like thousands of PNMs, you basically have to like try to resubmit votes for everybody or start from square one. So once real recruitment starts this page, just pretend like it doesn't exist to you guys. I will say we have tried to make it as like obvious as possible. We have this big red thing at the top. We have a little warning down here. And even when you click this, it's going to give you one last chance to not do it. So it'll tell you what it's going to do. You have to click the red reset button. So red makes it even more scary. It'll reset the account. I'm going to click cancel. Um, and hopefully if y'all did that during real recruitment, you would hit cancel too. But yeah, just don't go to this page. Um, only other two things I'm going to show you. Configuration. This page um, is pretty generic on this test account. We just have our ballot one to five. You can see how we do the round scores and the overall score. But depending on y'all's, again, national or international chapter, you will have different information in here potentially. So um, if you guys partner with us, like your headquarters partners with us, we have a bunch of information on the specifics of how you guys vote, how your rounds work. Um, some of you guys have like special rounds, won't get into it because again, it doesn't apply to everyone, but it's kind of like, if you know, you know, if your chapter is one of them, you should know about it and it'll be under this configuration page. You can see what the different values are, what they mean, how they add together. So you can make sure all of that's working for you guys. The other thing is this training page. This training page, Sarah Beth worked really hard on. It's a lot of information. It's basically everything we went over in this webinar, but in written form with screenshots. And then we also have one of our old webinars linked up here. So you can always go through here, walk through the steps, um, get back on track to figure out how you're doing things. You also can see our support email, recruitment underscore support at omegafi.com. It's 24 seven support during recruitment. So if you guys are voting and it's like, 1.30 a.m. and then all of a sudden you have a question or something's not working how you thought it should work or a total looks wrong, you can email this email and there will be somebody awake, not just one somebody, there's like a team of people who are awake and they will get back to you um, in the middle of the night so that way you guys can finalize your list, submit them, and not everybody's stuck at the chapter house until those are submitted. So that support will be there. Once recruitment season's over, it goes back to normal business hours. So, you know, if it's like a random... Tuesday in like February or maybe like in March or something. I don't know. It probably won't be 24 seven support. Um, maybe we have that spring support, but my point is if it's not regular recruitment season, 
you'll just get an email back the following business day. But during recruitment, 24 seven, we'll be there for you guys. You also have this big get help button, which is where I went for this. Um, this is our knowledge base. So you can see it's kind of broken down into different areas based on what you would need. We have videos and webinars, FAQs, questions on the ballot. You can click in here and you'll see there's like a ton of articles. We're constantly writing one, writing them. I'm about to write a new one today. So there'll be another one added. Um, but you can always refer back here and have that support. And then the last thing I'll show you is the support button down here. It makes this little pop-up, and this is basically exactly what this is, but instead of having to go into the knowledge base, you can just search what you want here. So maybe you want to look at like ballot. Um, when I type that in, you can see all of the articles that would relate to ballot. So that's kind of a vague search, but whatever you guys need, you can put in that search, and it's going to have the articles right there. For you guys and you can just click them and then you'll be able to see the article like in a mega recruit so that's really cool any questions i'm going to switch back to my powerpoint but y'all don't be afraid to submit those i know we're just about out of time no okay i think uh yeah answered most of them throughout the the, uh, the webinar. webinar yeah perfect Okay, so here's those, again, tips. I said I'd give them to you again at the end of the webinar. So preparation equals success. Make sure you guys log in. Make sure all your voting members can log in. No questions there. So that way you can troubleshoot, update emails as needed. Uh, make sure you practice. So again, do mock recruitment, run through it, practice using that PNM list. The more you do it, the more comfortable you'll get with it. It really is foolproof. So even if you'd never done recruitment before, if you just read those steps and read the, like the paragraphs under them, it'll tell you exactly what you need to do. And then train just again, like you went to this webinar, if you want to refer back, you can rewatch it. We'll be emailing this um, later this week a recording of this one you can also see any of the other ones we did earlier this summer they all have the same information but the ones earlier this summer will have that little matching section for you guys to look at so definitely check that out um, and again just know where your resources are so if you have questions come up it doesn't feel um, like you're gonna have to panic and try to find an answer okay so now we have our final page of my little PowerPoint slide I made. Um, it's just got our email. So again, recruitment underscore support at omegafi.com. If you or your members have login questions, you can email login support at omegafi.com. If you send login questions to recruitment support, they'll also be able to help you. But we do have like this whole login team if you want to use that. And then that in-app help. Uh, get help button that I showed you that takes you to the knowledge base or that support button that links it like in a mega recruit. You have that with all of those articles, videos, anything you guys may need. So if we have no more questions, which I don't see any come in, it looks like Sarah Beth did a great job answering a lot of these throughout the webinar. I will let you guys go. We finished just a minute over time. So I'm going to say that was pretty good. I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening. I really appreciate you guys joining us and I hope you guys have a great recruitment. Bye.